Hey Michael, uh, I want to commend you. This set looks really, really great. I have a few comments though, so let's uh, jump right into them. Uh, just for consistency's sake, would you please update the uh, title to match my title block, um, both there and on the uh, the signs? I didn't review these sheets. Um, all right. Uh, <clears throat> there are a series of existing crawl space uh, vents, more or less at grade. Uh, can you please include a, a detail, a standard detail to show a, a void form so that the concrete doesn't block those vents off? And I'll indicate on my plan, on my site plan, uh, where those are supposed to go. Um, we are missing the framing or the indication of the framing for the fireplace, uh, both above and uh, below the roof. Uh, please go ahead and show that. <clears throat> please show ahead, uh, go ahead and show your break lines uh, for this. It looks a bit jarring. I'm sure it's fine, but if, if it's not too much trouble, include the break lines. Um, you can ignore this comment, actually. I'm just going to go and delete it. I was saying, like, this should be a consistent pour. But I suppose uh, the contractor could come and have the flexibility to pour different levels uh, at different times. It just I don't quite understand the need to go from eight three one to ten three one at this location. So maybe take a look at that. I'll keep the comment here. Uh, you let me know uh, what's appropriate there. Um, for the uh, Base of the angled wall, can we get a, uh, a custom detail showing that unique condition and uh, specifically trying to keep the, uh, the stud to stud? There should be another um, a double stud shown, I think. Um, I want the wall to look uh, about nine inches thick uh, outside to outside uh, plus finishes. So go ahead and show uh, doubled up studs here, um, but try to get it down to nine if possible, or I don't know what, but let's make sure that I don't have to, a jutting out um, foundation at the bottom. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, oh, we're, we're missing the slab for the, uh, the area around here. I know it's a wonky shape, um, but I'm curious as to your guys' thoughts as to why uh, slab here, but not here. Uh, maybe it's just a, a, an oversight. Uh, let me know, though. Uh, the, there's a, a thick wall here. Um, it's about a foot wide. Um, it might be thicker than that, actually. How thick is this thing? Uh, bear with me while I double check. Uh, this guy is, oh, 18 inches wide, actually. So, uh, can we show the appropriate, um, low framing? Uh, and do we need a wider foundation for that? Probably. Uh, so let's go ahead and show that. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is great, by the way. I'm, I'm so happy that you're able to eliminate that middle steel beam. I really like that. really appreciate your, your due diligence there. Um, please do show the uh, chimney up above again. Um, and I agree with you. The C10 by 15 is much better. I, I don't even know why I went with the 20. I think that was just an oversight on my part. Uh, the 15.3 uh, looks the same as the 20, um, although it doesn't quite match the thickness of the uh, the W10 by 49, but uh, I don't know. I'll work with the GC about maybe there's some other way to, to finish off the corners where the uh, 10, the C and the W meet. Um, but for what it's worth though, actually, uh, because I think the way to do it is to, at least to start is to, I don't know. Um, I don't know quite how to marry uh, these two parts together. It made sense to me to buy the C10 um, and then just sort of, you know, remove this bit. I know how easy is it for me to do it in SketchUp, but, you know, cut it out. But that seems ridiculous now that I think about it. It probably makes more sense to stop the C10 here and then somehow infill this gap with a plate of steel, but which thickness, right? The the W10 by 49 is maybe not significantly thicker, but that's an eighth of an inch. That's probably not too big of a deal. Maybe it then makes sense just to come in here with some um, new plates, uh, standalone plates to fill this in. You know, and do we, do we match that? 
that doesn't look much better. I think it's probably fine to go that route. Um, and then doing the same thing here. I think I, you know, we get a little plate here that we install. Uh, why is not working? Well, I don't know why it's not, why it's not working, but okay. We'll just go that route. Um, so I think you have it right, but look, so are you showing your, yeah, your C10 stops right at the middle and then we'll do a little weld on for the corner there. All right, uh, shows the double stud. Yeah, we talked about that already. Um, and please uh, call out again the, the special attention. I, your detail nine does show it slanted, but I think just seeing it in plan, the call out that this is an angled or slanted wall, see arch elevation 2A40 for the angle um, is appropriate. And they come to my 2A40 and they'll see that 15 degree angle there and that'll indicate what they need to do. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I'm doing two by sixes for the bathroom structure, not two by fours. Um, so if you could please uh, update that. This is great. These uh, side bolted guys are great. Uh, it's all nine and a quarter. That's great. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking about the detail you guys came up with uh, for the seating of the uh, the TJIs and, or the uh, the steel beams into the glue lens. I think it looks really great. Um, foundation details, everything looked okay here. Um, I was freaking out about seeing the uh, extra wide foundation inside the bathroom, but I think once you update all your studs to show two by sixes rather than two by fours, plus the half inch plywood, that's gonna be perfect. That's exactly the six inches. It's gonna marry up beautifully. Um, any uh, concerns or details about the drywall attachment here? Probably not. Um, that's fine. It's only an eight inch thing. So yeah, update all your uh, your two by sixes or two by fours to two by sixes. Yeah, what can be done to eliminate? We don't need to worry about this bump anymore. Uh, we can get rid of that. Rid of that. Show the two by six depth. Base section may vary from that shown. Base section is that? Did you mean this here? Oh, I I I wondered what that meant. I noticed sometimes you have a, a layer of sand, um, sometimes not. Just curious as to why sometimes and not the others. Weigh in on that. This looks beautiful. <laughs> Big steel cage down there. Uh, this is great. So I see that you got that C10 um, by 15 uh, at the end, and you're allowing the plywood to cantilever off the edge there. And I think that's great. I wonder what the limit is that you're comfortable with that. Like this looks like maybe it's, uh, I don't know, another three inches out. Uh, maybe I'm not scaling that correctly, but it, it looks really great. And um, I wonder what the limit is there. Not that I want to take it there, but uh, it's just good to know. And then I'm wondering on the, on the flip side, how far can the plywood go past the W10? Um, just because I want to know what I could do with the flashing that I try to snap around a plywood edge rather than snapped around the plywood and the wide flange. Uh, that'd be interesting. Uh, it'd be nice to know what I could play with there. Uh, and this, oh, this is great. When I saw this, I was so, I was a little confused at first. It took me a while to understand how you were seating everything. I assumed that the W10s were going to just sit plumb on top of the uh, glue lands but you're notching them in. And I wanted to confirm that this is the shape of the glue lamp, that we are taking the 21 inch depth of the glue lamp, cutting that um, from the top, the 10 inches for the W10 to seat in. Um, and then I have basically the rest of this to sort of play with and shape as I like. Um, but I want to confirm that because if, if so, this is great because this really takes this hold depth so much lower right so if i come in here and i just sort of uh hide that um that finish surface down here and i look at how you guys now have this w beam wide flange sitting on top of that glue lamp it's it's so awesome because now i mean that's 10 inches lower than i was expecting it to be and that just looks so slick now 
I mean, it looked great before, but it looks even better uh, now thanks to that that detail that you're showing. And I just want to make sure that I've got this right. So if I cut through here, I mean, more or less, yeah. And I think per your other details structurally, you were showing uh, that, yeah, the TJIs, these nine and a half TJIs are, their tops are flush with the top of the glue line, which is more or less what I'm showing. I mean, my model is, has some fudge factor in it. Uh, so I sort of wanted to say that I'm really excited about how that looks. Confirm I read that right though, please. <laughs> uh, so here looking at the bolt pattern, um, I take it it didn't work out that we could just do the uh, the single row. You know, I would have loved to have seen uh, just the bolts in the middle, uh, but I take it, it we need the four. Uh, confirm that for me. And if we do, uh, let's make this two inches from the bottom a three, if we can, so that it looks a bit more uh, consistent, um, right? Because if we, if we have this at three inches, and then I think you had another, a four inch, and then I, I'd like this to be equidistant, you know? So if we take uh, what remains of the, uh, the 21 inch glue lamb after we add after we deduct the w10 and then add some tng on the bottom we're left with about 10 inches if we could subdivide this by three three and three that'd be great but if we need to keep the four here i'm okay doing a, a three a three four three or a three and a third three and a third three and a third um, but i just like to not have that be two inches if that isn't critical for some reason this be a two That's here. Uh, this looks wonderful. I'm, I'm so glad that you guys include these kind of details that really help everyone, uh, the builders, understand what's going on, what's to be expected. Uh, without this sort of detail, it, it may not be apparent to framers who are just breezing through architectural to get to the structural. So thanks for doing this. Um, I wanted to talk about this ledger right here, this beveled ledger that you're showing. Um, I want you to add a note that says that due to the angled relationship of this angled wall and the angled roof, uh, this ledger isn't actually uh, running parallel to this bathroom wall with the door in it, right? Uh, so if we look at the model, let's take a look over here, um, we can see that I've got these uh, standing seam roof beams or roof ridges um, running parallel to the bathroom walls. And you can just barely make out that there's a bit of an angle here. This triangle shape right here is due to the fact that this wall is angled and this roof is angled. So that ledger, that shaped beveled ledger that's inside of this uh, roof assembly is not parallel to this wall. Um, it's, it's super odd, I know. Um, here's another view of it. So this guy is parallel. And this wall, just again, because of the angled nature, isn't. Now, I've tried to include some of these um, extra dimensions on exactly what these different opening uh, distances are on my elevation one. So if you'd please also call that out, uh, see elevation one A4.0 for more information. Uh, last thing I'm realizing, I think I skipped one. Um, where did I possibly skip one? Give me a, give me a minute. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, here you had a, a 10 foot wide shear wall. Uh, there's a door into the bathroom right here. Uh, so I think this number needs to be updated. All right, I think that's it.